I think most magicians in the world know the famous Hunter Knot trick, but people tend to overlook it as a strong performance piece. It, it often gets relegated to a walk around bit or, or just a puzzle. I think there's a lot more to it than that. So let's have a look at G.W. Hunter's famous knot with another of our inside peaks, the Hunter Knot Revisited. Got it. <laughs> Did you know that G.W. Hunter invented the red snapper as well? Hi, my name is Timothy Hyde from MagicCoach.com with another of our inside peaks, and this time looking at the Hunter Knot Revisited. You know, Hunter is often referred to as being the father of pocket tricks. The acrobatic matchboxes was one of his as well. He was British born, he lived in the States for a while, he was a, a comedian, a singer, and an accomplished card man. So at its basic level, the hunter knot is a great trick, but it can be a much stronger routine, and that's what we show you in the book. It's perfect for trade shows where you need to stop people. You can stop one or two, and then that crowd builds and into a laughing, engaged group, and then you can move into your sales pitch. In roving events and street shows, the same goes. If, if you're busking, you stop a few people, build up the crowd, and then move into your set show. I've always found it useful in a walk-around close-up situation. Say you're booked to do two hours and you arrive at the venue expecting a couple of hundred people, which is going to be nice and easy, and you find there's maybe 15 or 20 people. What are you going to do? You burn through your material. Having something like this up your sleeve is very, very useful. It can fill up 10, 15 minutes or so. Now, in the book, which is fully illustrated and delivered as a PDF, so you can read it on your device, or you can print it out and study it. We fully explain my modular routine, which really gives a structure to the trick. Now, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It also has a clever convincer halfway through that really keeps people's attention. It, it draws them back in, even if they've started to think, oh, I can never do this. They suddenly think, oh, I might be able to do it. We also have an interrupt. This is inserted so they focus on something else halfway through, and it lessens the chance that they will keep concentrating on exactly what is going on. We also, at the end, we have a blow-off. And this is where they're, they're taught something else, so it softens the challenge aspect, and it further removes their attention from the basic slight that you have performed each time. Now, the basic effect can be found in many places. You possibly learnt it from Tarbell, Abbott's Encyclopedia, Fools, Self-Working Rope Tricks, or Barry Richardson's Theatre of the Mind. Fools has a clever approach where he focuses attention on one hand while the other hand does the, does the move. And Barry has a, a bit in his routine which is quite similar to something I do. Now obviously if you don't know how to do the move, I will explain it fully in the book with photos step by step exactly how to do it. But I also add two bits of finesse that I believe are seeing print for the very first time. The first is a display position. Working with a crowd enables you to move into a display position that actually facilitates the move and makes it far more deceptive. And I'll show you two different ways to get into that position. Secondly, I have noticed that there is a slight discrepancy between the position of the rope at the start of the move and at the end of the move. A clever spectator may see that and lead them to see that something has been going on. I show you a way to eliminate that discrepancy. I include in the book the very script that I use, and I teach you how to deal with people who may kind of figure out what's going on, or perhaps know, already know how to do the move. And I'm going to teach you this. It's what I call the OMAP Flourish. A <laughs> one-handed mid-air knot. You know, I've never seen another magician perform that, and I, nobody I've taught it to has ever seen it before either. And this delightful flourish was 
mentioned briefly in a Tony Griffith column in Genie magazine many years ago. And I was fascinated by his brief description there, and I explored it for quite a while and came up with a way to replicate it time after time. And it's fast, and it's flashy, and it's showy, and it's actually quite easy to do if somebody explains step by step the the moves that you need to take. You can actually do it one-handed once you get uh, competent at doing it. it. Serves a specific purpose, but it can also be inserted into other routines. So if you're doing a cut and restored rope, you can also do that flourish if you wish at some point during the routine. It can also be used as a traffic stopper in a trade show situation or a street show, a busking show. If you're just standing there ready to start, you do the one-handed flourish a few times, people stop and notice, and then you pull them over and say, challenge them to do the, the knot without letting go the end. So it serves a very useful purpose. I teach you fully how to do that in the book as well. So that's what you get in The Hunter Knot Revisited, a professional modular routine that can build a crowd, can fill in time, it packs small, it plays big, it involves a lot of people, it generates a lot of laughter, it's cheap as chips to put together, it's easy to learn, and this contains a few things that you won't find anywhere else. Well, that's it for this review. You can learn more about the book or buy a copy by clicking the links above or in the description below. Please do us a favour by clicking the like button, and you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. We have plenty more videos in the pipeline. And come join us at magiccoach.com. You can actually download a free bonus pack of ebooks, reports, and videos. So, my name is Timothy Hyde. I'll see you in the next video.